Hello. The conversation I had with a guy some time ago is why I'm going to be talking about the topic for today. Okay? This guy called me up to ask what are the tax implications that there are in the real estate industry. He just wanted to know um, what are the tax obligations he would have. I mean, if he starts his own real estate business or in his existing real estate business, I think he was, he was already running. So he wanted to know. Apparently, he's been getting some tax letters and all of that. So he just wanted to know what, I, what his obligations are and all of that, you know? And I thought about it. Of course, I shared that with him. Then I thought about it that a lot of my listeners probably would need this. And so today, we'll be talking about taxes and levies, okay, that are in the real estate transaction space. What are the various tax components and levies, fees and things like that that you get to pay uh, when you are in the real estate space? Of course, it may not be exhaustive, so, but I'll share as much as time can allow on YouTube. My name is Debo Adejano, MDCEO Realty Point Limited, a real estate entrepreneur. They call us the circular lot people. Yes, that's what they call us. I'll be right back to give you the full gist, the taxes and levies, fees and all that you get to deal with when you are in the property space. Real estate independence fast track cost is not something you want to joke with at all. Loads and loads and loads of learning and information and benefits await you at the next one. All you need to do is ensure that you register for your next fast track course. Be looking forward to seeing you. Do you want to be financially free? I hope you know that you retire someday and you probably are desirous of doing business with real estate or investing property for yourself for your use. You need to learn about it before you make that investment. I tell people you want to buy properties, you want to invest in property one way or the other, don't do it until you attain the next real estate entrepreneur's fast track course. See you there. Welcome back. Now, so, there are a handful of them, actually. I mean, of course, some cuts across the real estate space. It's not just peculiar to real estate, okay? In fact, maybe a lot, okay? A lot of them are not just peculiar to real estate, but there are those that are peculiar. But let's just start with some of the general ones. I'm sure you've heard of company income tax before, yes? Or personal income tax, okay? So, company income tax is what the corporation pays, what a company pays on his income. So if you run a real estate company, of course, you'll be susceptible to paying company income tax. You should pay that. And if you're an individual and you earn money on real estate, there is your income tax, okay, that you should be paying. Maybe you work and if you work in a real estate company and you earn money, of course, there is the income tax that you should be paying. There is what you call pay, you know, pay as you earn also. Uh, that's if you are a staff of, you work in a real estate company, you are expected to pay payee. And that is supposed to be paid in the state where you are resident. Okay, you pay to the state government where you are resident. While the company income tax is usually paid to the federal inland revenue. So the local inland revenue or the state inland revenue will be the ones to collect your payee or your personal income. Okay? So that's one tax that you get to pay. And also there is this, if you run a corporation, okay, there is education tax. It's important. Every, uh, most organizations, I would say, uh, categorized, are levied to pay education tax, okay? And that's about 2% or so. Yes, 2% of your income that you are expected to pay. And you pay that into the education fund. You pay ETF. You pay that into that. Account. And that is supposed to be used for the purpose of, you know, ensuring that our education system is in top shape. Ask me if that has been achieved. Well, I know that ETF has been instrumental to certain um, establishments, certain facilities, and all of that in a number of tertiary institutions, especially. So that's that. Then let's come, um, I mean, closer home. You also talk about um, capital gain tax, okay? Capital gain tax or, yes, or property gain tax. They call it capital gain tax or property gain tax. Now, this is the tax you get to pay if you should, on the money, on the gains you made 
on a property. If I buy a property and I later sell the property, especially as an individual, I get to pay my capital gain, my property gain tax, okay, or capital gain tax. So if I bought the property for 10 million naira and I sold it for 20 million naira, that means I made 10 million there, okay? I get to pay 10% is what is usually charged. So I get to pay 10% of that gain, that 10 million gain, the difference between 10 and 20, 10 million. I get to pay 10% of that, which is 1 million naira, goes for my property uh, gain tax or capital gain tax, okay? Now, you also need to note, and by the way, let me just put this disclaimer here. This is not a professional advice. You are not consulting at this point, okay? I'm just sharing my own ideas, personal opinions, and things like that. If you really need professional advice, you need to go sit down with your professional task consultant, your professional accountant, the respective professionals that you, professional property uh, uh, person, and we can talk to you under that kind of condition, specifically to your own matter and address it, okay? So go talk to your professionals to just fine-tune it. But this is just to give you a heads up, at least give you some uh, knowledge about what it is that you can be confronted with. Now, talking about the capital gain tax again, you are, you are allowed to deduct, okay, any expense you made that allowed you to hold on to the ownership, to protect the ownership of that property while it was with you. So, if between the time you bought it for 10 and you sold it for 20, you you did some uh, insurance cover, you know, you can deduct that. You paid some professionals maybe to manage the property for you, you can deduct that. Maybe you perfected some titles, you can deduct all of that from the gain before you now charge 10%. But I believe that your, your professional, your tax consultant will help you a lot with that. Then, there are, there are those that we call state property tax, okay? State property, there are a number of tax... Um, that the state charges, okay? Uh, in a state like Lagos State, there is this common, so there is tenement rates and there is grand rent. Tenement rate and grand rent. If you check your document, your, especially for those of us who carry, uh, who have C or 4 on our, on our properties, if you check there, it's usually stated what the grand rent will be in that document, all the states in the country. Is stated there. That grand rent is what you get to pay, except it is reviewed every year on that property. Because guess what? You are a tenant. If you have C or 4, you are just a tenant for 99 years. Yes, it's a lease for 99 years. So you get to pay grand rent as evidencing the fact that you are a tenant. Grand rent. Now, there is also what is called a rate. Tenement rate is usually on properties that have been developed and are tenanted. Okay? So you get to pay tenement rate. So those two taxes are for uh, properties in terms of um, grand rent and tenement rates. But in Lagos State, for a long time now, and I think one or two other states are trying to go in that direction. I know they've, they've been trying to go in that direction. Uh, it's like there's a merger of the tenement rate and the grand rent to produce what we call land use charge. So what you see in Lagos is, a land, is land use charge. Land use charge. They are the rates that have been calculated and how it is determined and all of that. But that's a tax you get to pay every year. You get to pay your grand rent or tenement rate or land use charge, if that is what is uh, applicable in your state, especially if you're in Lagos state, or grand rent or tenement rate in other states, okay? You get to pay that every year. Every year you get to pay that. Now, you need to have an idea of all of these things so that you are conversant with what it is that is expected of you, okay? Um, of course, withholding tax, if you do transactions in real estate, withholding tax is not an exception. Uh, if you provide services to someone, you're, um, you know, things like that, you are, you are expected to, as a company, you are expected to pay tax or to withhold tax if you're a corporate entity. So, corporate entity is a collecting, is appointed on behalf of government to collect for them. So, it withholds for them. Um, and what withholding tax simply talks about is, A, if, you're a, if you give an organization service, a real estate organization service, for example, they will take 10% as a, if you're a company yourself, a corporate entity yourself, they will take 10% of your amount charged, okay, uh, maybe for your service. They will take 10% of it and withhold it. What they are supposed to do is, if your service is 100000 they will pay you 90000 
and pay, remit 10,000 to the government, get you a receipt for it, and you have that receipt. Okay? What that receipt enables you to do is at the end of the day, remember I talked about company income tax. At the end of the day, when you do your computation, and this is the amount of taxes you ordinarily have paid, because some part of it already has been withheld, you can present that to reduce what you now pay. So let's now say that you've paid that 10000 and by the time you compute your annual um, uh, accounts for the year, your company income tax is going to say 100000 naira. If you have that receipt of the 10,000 naira that was withheld, you take that away from the 100,000, it's 90 you will pay. You understand? You just pay 90,000. That's the meaning of withholding. They are withholding the tax in advance, more or less. It's paying government, almost like acting like collecting agent for government. And they're mandated by law. Whoever you render service to or you sell goods to is mandated by law, okay, to do that. Uh, of course, VAT also, value added tax. Is there? Uh, it's um, like we told you. I said it's five percent for individual, most cases, ten uh, percent for corporate, most cases, but not all cases. There are some peculiar services and all of that that even as a corporate you get charged only five percent, and there are some that are free from you don't um, uh, charge withholding. VAT also, VAT value added tax. That's seven point five percent now. It used to be five percent in the country, Nigeria, but it's now seven point five percent and. You know, for, a, for an organization, it's VAT in, VAT out. So if you pay value-added tax and then you charge value-added tax, the net is what you, I mean, what you are susceptible to. Your, 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 your tax consultant would help you in putting all of that together. But you must just be mindful of this kind of tax that they are available. And there are also ways, let me also say this, there are also ways uh, you can best optimize your operation such that you are not paying more than you should in tax. That is the way I will put it. You are not paying more than you should. That's because if you really don't know how to better optimize your transaction or if you don't have an idea of how to carry out your operations, you may be paying more than you are to pay in tax and that may hurt you. I mean, it may seriously be um, be very hurtful and for your business particularly. Take, for example, company income tax is 30%. And I tell you that there are some things that, depending on how you handle them, you can, you can qualify, or the industry you are in, you can qualify for certain exemptions and all of that. Be allowed to be able to do some uh, um, deductions and things like that. The, T uh, tax exemptions and stuff like that, you know. So you need to sit down with your with your with your professional to talk about this. For most documents in real estate, you pay stamp duty on them. If especially you must subject them uh, to legal uh, uh, proceedings. If for them to be acceptable legally, okay. If you have to provide them in court and things like that. You have you must have done stamp duty on them, okay? And stamp duty, I will talk about stamp duty in another episode because it's becoming very popular right now. And I'll clarify uh, some of the things that are hey, six percent stamp duty and all of that. It's not exactly like that, although that is not to say that I mean we can do we can I mean I'm, I'm sure we can do without it right now, but then unfortunately it's been forced on us, and but it's not as high as six percent. I will talk about that in my next video. So there is stamp duty that you get to pay. I will talk more about it in my next video, right? So Stamp duty, you get to pay something they call assessment fee. You know, they come and assess the area, look at the development and all of that, and say this is what you pay. You come, you get to pay something like neighborhood uh, development charge. You know, neighborhood development, if you are processing titles and all of that, you know some of these levies and fees that I'm talking about that you've had to pay in time past, okay? So you get to pay some of that, you know? So that's also uh, some things that you pay uh, when it comes to the real estate world or property world, as they say. So, like I said, in my next video, I will talk about stamp duty because it's raging right now. And I need to just explain certain things so that you can better be educated and know how to go about things regarding stamp duty. But this that I mentioned are some of the tax levies and all of that that you have to deal with when you are in the property industry. Till I come your way in another episode, my name is Debo Adejano. Ensure that you follow me on my social media handles, Debo Adejano, Instagram and all of that, Facebook and or Twitter. Yes, that's where I am. And then 
please subscribe to this channel. If you've not subscribed, subscribe to this channel. We usually dish out very useful information, things that can help you, okay? That can help you in terms of what you do and how you do your real estate business. And that's what we stand for. And that's what we ensure we bring to you always. See you in my next episode. Thank you. Thank you. I believe you've enjoyed the video that you just watched. You gained a lot, right? Now, let me share with you where they say it all starts. It's called the Real Estate Entrepreneur's Fast Track Course. It's a two all day event. Two days fully packed teaching you about real estate. Not just teaching you, showing you real estate stuff that you probably would not know. I'll be teaching you as a real estate entrepreneur or someone that is buying real estate for personal use or for investment one way or the other this is a course you don't want to miss there is no two of its kind in the market it's the best that there is in the market and you want to be there guess what it is absolutely free if it is about real estate and it is about investing particularly in nigeria this is a course that you want to attend but the value that you will gain it is absolutely free all you need to do right now is to click on the link and register for the next real estate entrepreneur's fast track course. As a real estate entrepreneur or as a owner occupier of a house, this is a course you don't want to miss. So see you at the next real estate entrepreneur's fast track course. Click the link below and get registered. Looking forward to seeing you there.